Jorge Xolalpan, LGBTQ Mexican filmmaker who happens to also be a DACA recipient, is competing for a Golden Glove nomination for his film, Iron Lady, that tells his mother's story as an immigrant. And he is here with us tonight. Welcome, Jorge. Thank you so much for having me, guys. We're excited. Jorge, quickly walk us through the process on how you got to this point. Um, well, it's been a really uh, interesting process because I haven't really had a process. It's just... It's been all out of passion and love. I, I one day just after, you know, graduating from law school, I said, I, I want to make films. And I picked up my phone and I went out and I shot a film in, in 10 days, 10, 14 days. Um, I can't really remember, but I shot it with an iPhone. And I said, you know what, uh, if Sean Baker, who I adore, by the way, and I look up to, uh, was able to do it with Tangerine, so can I. I can, I can probably do something with, with a phone and $100. And I did. I went out and I, I shot a, f a film with a phone and um, in 10 days. 10, 10, 14 days, because we split up the $100 and we divided it for, on the days to to just get lunch for the actors and for myself. And the rest is history. I mean, five years later, I'm here uh, with a film, a bigger film that I never thought I would make based on my mom's life. And and that's kind of where my journey's been going. Jorge, a uh, longtime follower, first time caller. Legit, so thankful to have <laughs> you on this show because you have an amazing story. What I want to know is you dedicated this movie to your mom. How did that whole thing happen? What did she think when she finally saw the movie? Well, the film's based on her life. It's based on a memoir that she refuses to publish just because personal family reasons. Um, so I, I said, listen, mom, I, I really want to make a film um, about a woman who is really empowering other women and they can actually showcase the struggles that Latina women go, um, and, you know, go through in this country. And I said, I would like to take three chapters from that memoir and adapt them. And those three chapters actually happen to be the first three years of her uh, when she arrived to America and when she brought us with her. And, and you know, it, I don't think it's what she expected. She thought it was going to be something more dark and sad um, because, you know, my mom's been through so much. And literally, that's why I call her um, an Iron Lady, you know. And and when she saw it, she, she was with me through all the whole process of shooting the film. And when she finally saw it, she felt really proud and, and really happy. And... I think she's in the same boat as I am right now. We never thought that this, that this I call it a little film because it's such a little film, independent film, would take me all the way to this moment here and in my life. So, um, and also, you know, it brought my family and I closer. It, it really helped us heal uh, through so many uh, things that we went through, but she's definitely proud. And I know she, she really enjoyed watching it. It's, like I said, it was a healing process for all of us. Jorge, I have to ask, I mean, such an important story that you're telling here uh, but shot on an iPhone, uh, 10 to 14 days, uh, not, you know, not the Hollywood budget numbers that we're used to hearing. So tell us, what were some of the challenges that you faced uh, in these circumstances? You know, I wish I could actually tell you the challenges because um, I don't really <laughs> believe in limits or restrictions. I actually use limitations and restrictions in order to create art. Um, so if anything, it would probably be something like a scheduling issue throughout the shoot because Literally, um, I'm very flexible, and that's and I think that's the reason why filmmaking has worked out for me. Uh, I'm able to work with whatever the universe throws at me, and there's no challenge that we can't face. So, other than you know, probably not figuring out a scheduling issue with an actor or something like that. Other than that, my art is always we always try to get it right um, from 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 our perspective, at least because it's independent cinema, and you have so much time to be able to create films. Um, yes, it's difficult, and yes, it's stressful, and it's long days, but I really do love film. I love filmmaking and, and it's something that's already engraved in my heart. So I, I wish I could tell you, they always ask me about challenges, but I really don't, I can't really tell you. And if there is, I just probably don't think about them. I embrace them and I just move forward, uh, continuing to make films. As uh, JP was saying, you know, he's been, you know, we've been following each other for a while and I've been making a film a year. I make one film every year. Um, and that's helped me grow and it's helped me learn more about the filmmaking industry. Um, and it just gets me pumped. So I don't really think about challenges. Uh, maybe for the actors, uh, or I don't know, but to me, it was just, um, it was a fun process. It was a fun process, and I'm happy that I did it the way I did. I love it, Jorge. You are so resource so resourceful. Y lechas ganas, you know, when there, if there's a will, there is a way. And you're also a DACA recipient, so I want to ask you, what is your message to the Dreamers and to President Biden? Uh, I think that every time this question comes out, everyone always talks about, you know, uh, believing that something there's going to be a change. There is going to be a change, but from an artist to, from a DACA artist to all the uh, dreamers out there, all I want to tell them is to believe in themselves. Because if you don't believe in yourself, no one else will. And believing that you can accomplish something will get you really far in life. Um, 
whatever happens with this administration, uh, with or without a paper, we're going to continue moving forward. We're going to continue making this country. That's why I, I, I understand that you know we're known as dreamers, but I refuse to use that term. And I would hope that we start calling ourselves makers because we are making this nation, uh, whether this administration or the previous administration likes it or not, whether they give us a, any kind of citizen, citizenship status. Um, we are the makers of this nation and, and we're going to continue making. Um, so just watch us with or without a paper. We're going to continue, but don't stop believing in yourself. And if you don't believe in yourself, start believing in yourself because that's very important. Embracing challenges and believing in yourself, I man. That's it. a powerful message. I love that. Yo, so thankful that you hopped on. De veras. No, thank you. thank you so much for having me tonight. It's it's really an honor. And I, 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 I don't know what I did to be in this position today. So thank you so much. <laughs> You are you and you believe in yourself. Thank you, Jorge, so much for joining us. Thank you. Have a good night. <laughs>